Okay, since um, you guys have, at some capacity, you've each worked helping other people out, training people, setting up programs, either professionally or just passing on what, what you've learned. What are, what are some of the weaknesses that, you, uh, that are most common in people with their training? And uh, what, do you, what do you do to address? Let's start with, with Matt Leduski and work our way across the table. Uh, it really just depends on the person. Um, most of the time, just looking at the video, trying to figure out if you're just an average person who is in the gym, just trying to get get stronger. Most of the time, they're technically they's not very good. Uh, most of the time, they're probably quad dominant, so not enough hamstring work, and uh, a lot of times mobility is a big issue. Uh, with like even like they're trying, they try to switch over to sumo deadlift. They can't get their knees out, so they round over in the back. Uh, so kind of addressing those issues takes care of uh, a lot of things right out of the gate. Julia? Um, to piggyback off of what Matt said, technically, um, lifters tend to kind of get ahead of themselves. They want to push a little bit too far as far as you know, heavier weights first. Um, one of the big things that, that I've noticed um, with high school kids all the way up through you know, athletes um, and powerlifters as well is that there's a, uh, a lack of body awareness. So when you're trying to teach somebody how to stay tight in the squat or teach somebody how to stay tight in the bench um, or what, you know, your hips move first and then your head or whatever the position is, is they have a hard time um, visualizing that and understanding how the body is supposed to move. So if you can cue them and find exactly how they learn, if they're a visual learner, if they're a positional learner, if you need to touch them and move them in the right position, that'll help them out a lot. Adam? Um, bad habits. Um, you get a new guy in, and they've been training for three or four years on their own. And they, whether it's form or how they train, going too heavy too often, not heavy enough, um, it's just hard to break a bad habit. And um, you know, you have to just sometimes beat it into them over and over again, whether it's with ridicule or whatever. Um, the hardest thing I have found is to break a bad habit. It just stinks to have to break a really bad habit. Brian? Uh, there's really too many to delve into, but I would say uh, if you want to go through just each lift, like Matt said, basically mobility is a huge one. Knees tracking in really bad on the squat. Um, no upper back tightness. Um, you know, like Julia said, no awareness of, you know, you give them cues. So, well, what does it mean to keep my chest up? Or what do you mean my knees are going over my toes? So simple things like that. Bench, benching like a gym rat, no arch, no setup of any kind, pushing the bar way too far, an extra three or four inches. Um, you know, of course, no kind of leg drive. And then for the deadlift would be, you know, Matt said if they're trying to pull sumo, they're doing a stiff-legged sumo, not engaging their glutes, not pushing their, their feet out, um, you know, into the carpet, fanning them out, um, pulling in two motions. You know, they you, you straighten your legs out and then you, do like a bent over row at the top. Uh, no awareness of your chin or your head. You know, if you if you use a, a neutral head position, you got to learn how to, you know, uh, use it to your advantage. If you're a chin uplifter like me, you got to be aware. Okay, if the bar's sticking and it's coming across your knees, you got to keep keep pushing that chin up and that head back and squeezing your glutes, pushing the hips through. Just general things like that would would be pretty much any beginner to intermediate lifter would be. You'd look at them and be able to almost point to all those things uh, right away. Take a look at those, correct? Them. Dave? <clears throat> with the exception of the seminars that we put on, you know, working with a very small number of people, the majority of the people that I work with are going to be advanced elite lifters you know, like these guys here. So I don't, I don't look so much at the training and the programming because they are as good as what they are because they've already kind of figured that aspect out. So as to echo what they've son, said, I look at their technique to see, because for a beginner, the, tech, the technical problems are going to be just due to the fact that they don't know how to do the lifts correctly. With these guys, a technical breakdown is going to be a, cl a, a, a clue as to what that muscular weakness is what that imbalance is. So <clears throat> I want to find that technical breakdown. And with that, it takes seeing videos of them with damn near max lifts before that's going to happen because that's just the skill level they're at. You're not going to see that breakdown really until they miss. 
And then when you see that breakdown, you got to remember what is their style and what is their form because with each person that's always going to be a little bit different. Brian doesn't sit back and Adam doesn't sit back as much as what Julia will sit back. I can't make those sit back because that's part of their style and part of their form and I can't make her squat like them. So I have to know what that is so when I see that breakdown I can say okay this requires upper back work. This requires, you know, and from there I can dig into different special exercises that I've learned over the years that I think could help the guys out, but ultimately they'll decide if it's going to work for them or not. So just a different demographic that I work with. Okay. Uh, to, to expand on, on what Dave said, let's roll back around the table in the other direction. Uh, with some of the more advanced lifters that you guys have worked with, what differences do you see? What are the, the, the fine points that you commonly have to help them, them work with? Brian? Um. Cleaning up the lifts, they're you know typically uh, I'm not going to use the guy's name, but I'm working with you know a couple guys right now. One that's lifting tomorrow that if he does well, he should win you know his class tomorrow, 242. Might even win the overall. But he's got certain things in each one of the lifts that he does more times than not that cost him. Number one, squat depth. He's not consistent with the squat depth. He's not consistent with keeping his chest up. Um, other than that, when he does those things. He smashes squats, so probably squat a thousand tomorrow. The bench, the same thing. His butt always comes up. He can't quite figure out how to get his foot. You know, when, when I when he does what I tell him, have his feet a little further out, his heels driven down, his butt won't come up. But the uh, the meet and march he did, he probably would have made the top three if he'd have got a bench in. But he pressed the weight up each time, and each time his butt came up. And you know, it, the same guy I'm talking about, the same thing with the deadlift. He'll probably pull 800 tomorrow, but when he misses every time, it's because of his balance. He gets, you know, out over his toes, you know, a little bit with the bars. He's coming up, he flies up, and then he hitches it. It'll stop, and then it's two motions to come up hitching. Um, it, it, and so, you know, to kind of round that off, it's these guys are all strong, obviously, at that level. It's the little things. Like with me, I have stupid things that I do that make me miss lifts. Whether it's just a little tiny little technical thing that you know I'll let my knees shoot for on the squat and then I'll cave and then I'll miss the squat. Or if I correct those things, I'll smash the squat. So really it's minute little things with, with uh, you know like upper level pro guys like the guy I'm talking about and you know uh, it's just the little things that make the huge differences. Because they're already strong obviously but that's what separates someone like uh, this guy from a Jeremy Frey. You know what I'm saying? Because he's so solid, so technical. Every time it's going to look like this, every single time. And occasionally it will slip up, and that's why he'll miss. You know, he'll, he'll you know, do something stupid. He knows he shouldn't. He, you know, the, the weight will get out in front of him on the deadlift, he'll miss it. But nine times out of ten, or probably more than that, it'll be perfect, and he'll nail the lift. So, Before he goes to Adam, I'll make the point that uh, the sport is a game of inches when you get to the higher levels. You know, when you're in the lower levels, you can fall forward in the squat and you'll see the guys grind it back up. You're never going to see that at a higher level. At a higher level, if they're just an inch off with their feet, they won't even get the bar out of the rack. And you'll see them struggle and struggle and struggle, and then you'll see them step back, reset, boom, it'll come up like nothing. So as Brian's saying, you know, those inches, you know, as Al Pacino said and whatever the movie was, they all add up, man. And that's Any the difference. Sunday. Yeah, that's the difference between making the lift or missing the lift actually it's the difference between making the lift or just getting fucking crushed mm -hmm. you know and that's a lot of the times why you'll see somebody who does get crushed come back and repeat the weight and smoke it and people are like oh my god i can't believe how mentally strong he is this dude has nothing to do with that he put his feet in the right spot you know and that's why they don't get worked up if they do miss because most of the time that's what it is so adam go ahead yeah um the thing i'm most amazed um about when i'm dealing with top amateur or even in elite athletes is, um, and we deal mostly with multiply people, is um, they don't understand the gear. I'm amazed at how many people are just really strong and um, aren't using their gear right, don't know how to use it correctly, don't know how to groove a bench shirt or, or don't know where their straps should be on a good deadlift. Um, and obviously on the squat, I'm amazed at how many people are squatting really heavy weight, keeping their straps down um, you know, until they're almost ready to hit a max lift, um, instead of just really learning their gear and getting comfortable in their gear. And, you know, that, that's what I see the most and I preach the most is 
you know, put your straps up, let's put your shirt on, you know, let's set it right, let's learn how to use the gear. That's what you're going to the platform with. You're going to the platform with suit straps up, shirt on tight, you know, uh, deadlift with your straps up. That's how you should train. And, and you're so, already strong, now dial it right. all in. Yeah, dial it in with the suit because that's how you have to go to the platform. So that, that's what I see the most that, that, that amazes me with, especially, you know, top level lifters. And people you tell, do this, try this, try this. Hey, we've done it, you know, we've tried it all kinds of ways. Try this. No, I'm not going to do that just because I'm a knuckle. Yeah. Um, if I had to kind of do what Brian did and point on each lift, um, I think one of the, with high level lifters, well, with any lift, I think it starts off with the setup. I think a lot of us can say that from this, from the get go, if you're off, if, you're, if your checklist isn't right every time you sit on the bench, if you don't do exactly what you're supposed to do every single time, chances are you're probably gonna miss your lift. So um, I think that's what I see a lot with a lot of high level lifters. If they don't exactly get, like Dave said, their feet in the right position, if, they, if they're a little bit behind the bar, so now they're good morning the bar out of the rack, um, that's gonna throw the rest of their lift off. Um, a lot of what I see is um, one big major technical thing I think is a lot of times um, guys are loosening up in their upper back, even high level lifters um, in the squat. Um, I mean, small people like me, we can kind of keep our hands in tight and really squeeze, but some of those bigger guys who don't have the big shoulder mobility, uh, that's, that's tough. So they have to work extra hard on making sure that they can keep that tight. Um, and then one major thing with the deadlift, I think, is that uh, um, not pulling the slack out of the bar. I think that's one key thing that a lot of guys will just go up there. I mean, deadlift is one of those things where at that point you're just running on adrenaline. So they just go up there and think that they can just rip the bar off the ground. Um, and I know for me personally, if I miss, that's why I miss. So it's pulling the slack out of the bar, getting in the right position and going from there. It gets all those muscles tight too to exactly. activate. Exactly. Yeah. But again, it starts from your setup. If the setup yeah. is right from the start, chances are you'll make the lift. Yeah. So. Okay, Matt. Um, I think, um, you know, a lot of times people just, uh, as far as advanced lifters go, um, they try to do, they look at, they go, oh, well, I pull conventional, so I'm going to do what Brian does. Or I pull sumo, I'm going to do like this person does. Instead of going, breaking it down and go, okay, I miss here, and this is how I miss. This person's built like me, this, they train like me taking everything into account instead of just picking, picking one thing. Well, I missed at the top, so I'm going to do rack pulls. Well, that's, that might not be the, the issue. You know, you need to make sure you're doing the, the very small things where sometimes it's hard to come in and do the mobility stuff. It's hard to do the, the rehab stuff that there's no numbers. There's no, hey, I, I set a PR. I did it for more time. I did it for more reps. It's you know, external rotators or whatever it is, it's not always, like in, in Julia's case, for a long time we couldn't, she couldn't do good mornings because every time she'd do good mornings, she'd go, oh, my back is messed up now. Well, now we have the, re she has the rehab stuff and she's been doing the rehab stuff. She can do good mornings now to help build her deadlift and build what she needs to build. But the key is you have to do that the the rehab stuff and you have to do the a lot of times it's overlooked and you kind of go well you know I don't feel bad I feel better and then it just either falls off the grid or it, it's hard to tell because it takes a long time because you're so messed up and a lot of times sometimes it's just a little difference in well the exercise wasn't exactly what I needed to do it this way or I need to load it differently uh, so I think that's a big part of it uh, the technical parts sometimes ego I think is a big thing of being able to ask for help. So, you know, when you look at the, the top 2%, you know, Brian or, you know, anybody is, they're not afraid to go, hey, I'm gonna call this person, I'm gonna find out, hey, what are you doing for this? How can I do this? I'm gonna fix this thing. Where you get some guys who are up and coming and they've, they've seen some success, but they're not, look, they're not asking for more help. They're not trying to make it better. They're just kind of riding that wave. And then when that wave crashes and it's done, they're not getting any stronger. Now they're stuck instead of, okay, can I continue to fix? Can I continue to fix, set small records, keep breaking those records over a longer period of time instead of just now I'm stuck and I'm injured and don't know what to do. Matt actually brought up a point yeah. that I will um, segue into. 
a little bit more because this is probably where I help a lot of these guys more so than anything else and that is looking outside of with an advanced lifter having the ability to look outside at just that one small little paradigm which is themselves the gym and the meat and understanding that their training is an extension of who they are in their whole entire life and they need to find a way to be able to balance and to know you know what injuries are okay to try to push through what ones are okay that you need to back off of what criticism needs to be addressed what criticism needs to be avoided um, just basically working with them to keep them so they know what's the most important because there's a and the internet's great for a lot of reasons it's great for education and all this other kind of stuff but it brings a whole nother dynamic to the whole game where every one of the guys at the top level start to become put under the microscope and they're still human just like everybody else so criticism is going to affect people differently um, success is going to affect diff people differently you know sometimes it's not so much a matter of you know they need built up but sometimes they need to be you know knocked back down to reality to understand that look dude you're not going to go nine for nine with a 300 pound pr total every single meet there's a long-term objective here and let's make sure that we can fulfill this long-term objective so when you finish and this is a big goal of mine which i've expressed to uh, some of the guys here and a lot of the other guys as well i want everybody to be able to look back on the sport positively you know i don't want them to leave because they had to leave i want them to leave on their own terms because they want to leave and then look back and say you know what that was worth 10 or 15 years of my life so when it comes to the advanced lifters where i see the biggest disconnect is trying to find how to balance the imbalance which is never really going to be balanced in the first place so everybody's looking for the balance but it doesn't really exist so it's trying to figure out how to coexist with all these variables and not have relationships fall apart work fall apart and everything else fall apart so that would be by far above all the training and all the other stuff where the biggest problem is because all that shit will eventually affect what happens on the platform